Hey everyone, it's Steve Harris with NewsThemes.com. So today we're going to have a look at our new widget called the Shadow Boxes. And this is a pretty slick widget. It took a long time for us to build. Um, but what it does is it creates these really unique and elaborate shadows on Elements and Muse without using images. So the shadows that you can see here, um, for example, this perspective one that's coming off the back, this is actually made with CSS. So it's really light. It doesn't slow down your site or add a whole bunch of extra code to the mix. So let's take a look at how these are made in Muse. The first thing we need to do, as usual, is just scroll down to our Muse Themes toolbox and select the shadow boxes, which is number 14, and drag it out onto the page. I'm going to close this panel here so it gives us more room. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the options file panel on this widget. As you can see, it's pretty simple. There's only three options. And this first option is really important. It's called box name, and it says must be unique. What this means is that if you're going to create multiple instances of a box with these shadows, you need to give them all unique names. And I'll show you what I mean. So if we go ahead and preview this simple box first in the browser, you can see that it looks great. It has the uh, custom shadow applied and there's nothing wrong with it. If we just hold the option key and drag this so we create another box and we preview it in the browser again, now you can see only one box is appearing. So something's obviously wrong here. And the issue that we're having is because both of these boxes have the name box one. If we simply set the second box to box two and preview it in the browser again, you can see that we have no trouble. So just keep that in mind if you're going to use multiple instances of this. Okay, so the next option we have in the flyout panel is the shadow type. So we've included five different shadow types within this widget. The one on the far left right now is selected as lifted. Let's change the second one here to the second option, which is perspective. And we'll go ahead and create two more boxes. So let's just duplicate these down. And again, remember we need to give these unique names. We'll call this box three. And let's change the shadow type to sides. And box four. And change the shadow type to raised. There. And let's preview it in the browser. Okay, so now all four are showing up nicely. And you can see that the variety of different shadow types we've included. So the sides one obviously has a little bit of a heavier shadow on the sides. It looks as if the middle of the box is kind of coming towards the screen. And you can see the perspective one on the top right here has a pretty dramatic shadow if, as if you have a really low light source and it's projecting this long shadow behind. So they're pretty slick and they're nice and light. Now, you might be asking yourself, well, how do we actually design something with this box? There's a couple different options. So the last option we can set within the widget itself is to change the box color. And this is a hex value. So for the hex value, you can grab these directly in Muse, if you didn't know, just by going up through your fill box, your swatches panel. And if you were to select any color, let's say this blue, it gives you a hex value in the top. In this case, it's 29ABE2. I don't want that applied to the page, so I'm just going to remove that. But that's how it works. So let's apply one to this box and just take a look at how it works. So let's put it as 22A5BF, which is a blue that I use often on Muse themes. Okay, so let's preview that in the browser and see how it looks. So the box fills in solid, but you can see that there's actually a little bit of shading that comes on the inside of the box that gives it some of that depth and dimension. And although you can still subtly see it on this box, it's not as dramatic. So if you wanna preserve a little bit more of that, one trick you can do is you can just click the rectangle tool and draw a new box over top. I'm going to set the fill on this to a blue again, but let's go ahead and bring down our transparency significantly. So if we bring this down to say 25 or 26 around there and preview it in the browser, now you can see that we've actually displayed or we can see a little bit more of that inner glow to it. And that's obviously because the box on top is transparent. So that's how you'd use it if you're using colored boxes. Now the last thing you can do is you can use it for images. And to do that, I'd recommend you just place a simple image on the page. So I'll select this image of our Milo template. And let's just drag it and drop it anywhere. Now let's just bring it down over top of this box and scale it. And then shrink the frame to fit. And there, now the image is sitting perfectly on top of the box. And if we preview that in the browser again, you can see it looks like we have the shadow applied to the image.
Sometimes when you overlay elements like this, you can experience weird shifts um, if you have a ton of elements on the page and things are overlapping. So one thing you might try is if you just highlight both of these elements, right click and select group, it kind of creates it as one element in the code. And if you preview it in the browser, again, you can see the shadow still works fine, but those two elements are a little bit locked together. So that's it. I hope you enjoy this widget. It pretty much melted my brain making it. It was really difficult, um, but I think it came out nicely and it's going to be a really slick widget that you can use to create some interesting stuff on your site. So good luck with it. And if you have any questions, let us know. Thanks again.